Buford Pusser, somewhat of a folklore hero, has inspired not just one, but a trio of movies dedicated to his remarkable life. In addition, his legacy lives on through multiple songs, two of which even recount an altercation between Jimmy Buffett and Pusser. Pusser's law enforcement career was nothing short of legendary. He embarked on a near one-man crusade against local crime rings deeply entrenched in moonshining, gambling, and a host of other vice-centered crimes. His relentless pursuit of justice left an indelible mark on the pages of history. Buford Pusser, hailing from Adamsville, Tennessee, exhibited his enforcer-type persona from a tender age. Standing at an imposing six feet six inches and weighing in at 250 pounds in adulthood, he cast an intimidating shadow over nearly everyone he encountered. After completing high school, Pusser enlisted in the United States Marines, driven by a strong sense of duty. Unfortunately, he faced a quick discharge due to asthma, a bitter disappointment for him. In the face of this setback, Pusser pivoted toward a career in professional wrestling, adopting the persona of Buford the Bull. Over the next two years, he crisscrossed the semi-professional wrestling circuit throughout the country. However, fate had other plans when he crossed paths with the love of his life, Pauline Mullins. In 1959, Pusser and Pauline Mullins tied the knot, and their journey led them to Chicago. There, Pusser worked diligently for the Union Paper Bag Company for three years. In 1962, the couple decided to return to their hometown of Adamsville, where Pusser would eventually revisit his early aspiration of serving the public in a law enforcement role. Upon his return to Adamsville, Pusser wasted no time stepping into the roles of police chief and constable for his hometown. This marked the beginning of an illustrious career wholly committed to eradicating local crime and upholding the law. Just two years into his tenure, a tragic turn of events provided Pusser with the opportunity to ascend to the position of sheriff for McNary County. The incumbent sheriff met an untimely demise in a car accident, and at the tender age of 27, Buford Pusser made history by becoming the youngest sheriff ever to serve in Tennessee. Despite his youth, Pusser brought unwavering dedication to the task of law enforcement, and the protection of his community. His moral compass was resolute, and his commitment to steering his community toward what he deemed right was tireless. Upon assuming the role of sheriff, Buford Pusser was swiftly confronted with a grim reality. His predecessor had been entangled in a web of organized crime that plagued the region. At the heart of this criminal underworld were two notorious groups, the Dixie Mafia and State Line Mob, responsible for running a moonshining operation of considerable scale. These nefarious organizations distilled moonshine and peddled it in the illicit markets of Tennessee and Mississippi, reaping substantial profits from their illegal endeavors. Pusser, driven by an unyielding sense of duty, made it his personal crusade to dismantle these groups, fully aware that doing so would draw the ire of numerous adversaries. In 1964, shortly after his election to the sheriff's office, Pusser was brutally assaulted by members of the Moonshining Ring, who sought to protect their illegal operations from his enforcement efforts. During the vicious attack, Pusser sustained seven stab wounds and was left for dead. Miraculously, he survived, and from that moment on, his mission to eradicate the moonshiners became deeply personal. With newfound determination, Pusser launched a relentless campaign, raiding 42 stills and apprehending 75 moonshiners within his first year alone. In the years that followed, he withstood multiple gunshot wounds and survived various assassination attempts, all while expanding his crusade to include prostitution rings and gambling circles becoming a formidable force against organized crime. As astounding as Buford Pusser's life had been within his first year as sheriff, the subsequent events would take an even more surreal and heart-wrenching turn. In August of 1967, Pusser received a distressing call about a disturbance just outside of town early in the morning. He wasted no time preparing himself for whatever trouble lay ahead. But just before he left, his wife, Pauline, expressed her desire to accompany him. Together, they embarked on the short journey across town. As they drove, another car pulled alongside them, and without warning, opened fire on the unsuspecting couple. Tragically, Pauline lost her life in an instant, while two bullets found their mark in Pusser's jaw. Reconstructing his shattered jaw would require multiple surgeries spanning nearly three weeks, 
but Pusser miraculously survived the brutal attack. The devastating loss of his beloved wife, Pauline, added an unparalleled fervor to his mission. Driven not only by his unyielding sense of morality, but also by the burning desire to avenge her death, Pusser pursued the criminal rings with a determination and resolve that surpassed anything he had ever experienced. Buford Pusser firmly believed that the assassination attempt was a direct consequence of a case from the previous year. During that investigation, he had been fired upon by assailants while probing a robbery. In the ensuing exchange of gunfire, he had taken the life of Louise Hathcock, the common-law wife of Kirksey Nix, the notorious head of the Dixie Mafia. Pusser maintained that Nix and his associates were the masterminds behind the attempt on his life. Nevertheless, none of them were ever formally indicted on charges linked to the shooting. Over the course of the next three years, three of Nix's associates met violent ends, but any potential connection to Pusser remained shrouded in mystery. Nix himself found himself imprisoned for committing another murder. Persistent rumors suggested that Pusser might have been involved in the deaths of Nix's associates, but concrete evidence remained elusive. In a twist of fate, Nix's imprisonment may have ultimately spared him from sharing a similar fate. Pusser made it his personal mission to eradicate these groups. In the coming years, he would also survive multiple gunshot wounds and other assassination attempts. By 1970, Buford Pusser was compelled to step away from his role as sheriff due to term limits preventing him from seeking re-election. He returned to his former position as constable and made an attempt to run for the sheriff's office again in the 1972 election, but he was unsuccessful in garnering enough votes. In 1973, a movie titled Walking Tall, based on Pusser's life, was released, thrusting him into the national spotlight. In 1974, on the very day he negotiated the sequel to the movie, tragedy struck. While returning home from the county fair, Pusser's car collided with an embankment and careened off the road. In the ensuing accident, his vehicle caught fire and Pusser was ejected from the car. Tragically, he did not survive his injuries. Speculation and rumors swirled around the circumstances of the crash, with some suggesting it might have been an orchestrated assassination attempt. Kirksey Nix had previously demonstrated the ability to organize hits from behind bars and the fact that the trooper who investigated the accident later became the sheriff of McNary County raised suspicions. Adding to the mystery, Buford Pusser did not undergo an autopsy. Following his untimely death, community members transformed Pusser's house into a museum dedicated to the lawman's memory. The biographical movie Walking Tall spawned sequels, spin-offs, and remakes over the next nearly 50 years, cementing Buford Pusser's status as a folk hero immortalized in various forms of media. Despite his short life, Pusser left behind a legendary legacy that endures to this day. This was an incredible story about Buford Pusser, a man who defied all odds to confront crime and seek justice. If you were intrigued by this amazing story and want to continue exploring fascinating stories like this, don't forget to subscribe to Brain Outside the Box, activate the notification bell, and leave a like. Don't miss our upcoming episodes where we will continue to uncover extraordinary lives and think outside the box. Thank you very much. Bye.